Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode we're going to be talking about the Seattle Seahawks offensive line. And the main reason I wanted to talk about the Seattle Seahawks is because they are probably the prime example of a team where they invest in a lot of spark and people talk about them just getting athletes and not great football players and this is why athleticism at the offensive line doesn't work and all, all this kind of stuff uh, but I figure you know what let's go through the offensive line of the Seattle Seahawks to see if it's true that all they're doing is targeting super duper athletes uh, and this is one where we're, we're pretty much going to go through every position on that roster uh, for the most part just because there's so many different players in this team and there's so there's so much uh, uncertainty at many positions in terms of who's going to start left tackle who's going to start right tackle uh, you know guard center position I mean some of the positions are, are fairly easy to say who's going to be the starter but they drafted a lot of offensive linemen in this previous draft uh, on top of bringing in offensive linemen as well through free agency uh, to kind of help bolster things as well. So they're trying to get better on the offensive line, uh, and it makes sense. Anybody who's watched the Seattle Seahawks game knows that the Seattle Seahawks are just not that great of offensive line, uh, especially when it comes to protecting Russell Wilson. You know, sometimes he has to run around like a, a chicken with his head cut off at times, and I figure, you know what, let's profile this offensive line. Let's look at what athleticism traits they seem to value the most when they approach offensive line evaluation, at least with the, with the players they bring in, and see if they're probably trying to do a different approach. Uh, and we'll get into possibilities there. Uh, but based on what, what we're essentially going to do, uh, the, the metrics we're going to look at is explosive lower body strength score. That is a score that takes the vertical and the broad jump measured against mass density, which is weight divided by height. We're going to look at the speed score, which looks at the 40-yard dash measured against mass density. And then we're also going to look at the short shuttle slash three cone, or at least the flexibility score, which takes into account those two measures, short shuttle slash three cone, measured against mass density to see how flexible they are. And the way I describe flexibility in the most easily understandable term for offensive linemen is you're talking about leverage. Low man wins. If you have an offensive lineman that can bend more than another offensive lineman then they're going to win that particular battle uh, in that situation so with that out of the way let's get to the list the first player i wanted to highlight uh at least in alphabetical order we'll start with ethan posick uh they drafted ethan posick uh in day two and position wise they have him at least uh they had him sort of as a right tackle uh, sort of position so they're dabbling with him at tackle uh, he obviously played center at LSU he was a guard he could potentially play guard there's lots of different things but we're going to specifically look at him as an offensive tackle uh, because they seem to at least on the depth chart that I recently saw on um, on our lands uh, it had him as a as a tackle there so Based on his athleticism as a tackle, he has a 58.26 explosive lower body strength score, a 70.08 speed score, and a 40 flexibility score. Uh, based on that data, he has the potential to be a starting tackle at the right tackle position, but he's not exactly elite explosive. Uh, he has a little bit more speed than you want, but his biggest issue is flexibility with only 40 out of 100. Uh, which doesn't really hit the all-pro or pro ball threshold when it comes to flexibility. But this is actually an issue that actually showed up on film with Ethan Posick. Uh, you know, he's a tall offensive lineman, and he's not very bendy for his size. Uh, a lot of people just say, well, he's six foot six, so he's, he's not flexible. But there are six foot six offensive linemen that can bend and be in, and have leverage, and then there's also six foot six offensive linemen who don't have very good leverage and Posick just seems to be one of those guys who, d who falls into the doesn't have great leverage for being as tall as he is. Uh, we'll see what happens with him if, if it doesn't really look like they're going to try him out at center of course uh, but he's a he's a player who at least has a starter profile but that flexibility is an issue when it comes to pass protection when it comes to leverage in general in most offensive lines. 
Then we have George Faint. Uh, he is a offensive tackle for them. He has a 99.86 explosive lower body strength score, a 96.60 speed score, and a 97.97 flexibility score. This was also by his pro day numbers, by the way, guys. Uh, and so these may be off, but even if they are off by like 10%, uh, this is still someone who's a fairly athletic player. However, this is one of those examples where just because a guy's super athletic doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be an elite offensive lineman. Uh, there are other factors to being a great offensive lineman than athleticism. Y you need to have that athleticism, but you also need to have other traits uh, like technique and grit and toughness and just the ability to uh, have the, the football IQ you're looking for. So um, as, as much as people want to just say athleticism doesn't matter, it does matter, but there are other traits that matter just as much, and you have to value each of those traits equally, in my opinion. Uh, and I think George Fain is a guy who definitely has had his struggles uh, and is a super athletic guy who sort of should have worked out, at least in their mind, but that just isn't how it always happens. Uh, you know, so Tom Cable is one of those guys who uh, I'm probably paraphrasing a, a quote of his was that, you know, offensive linemen in college football just don't get the type of training or don't get the type of uh, polish as they used to. So uh, you should just find a great athlete and then mold them into whatever you want to mold them into. Uh, but George Faint, based on his testing, is someone that you should have molded already. <laughs> so, uh, well, again, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, but I would say that he's just one example of, you know, why just being a great athlete doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be a great player at the offensive line position. Uh, but as you can see from the thresholds, you should at least be looking for guys who have above average traits when it comes to athleticism. Then, of course, we have Jermaine Effetti. Uh, he was their first round pick uh, from the previous year. Uh, based on his athleticism, he had a 96.27 explosive lower body strength score, a 64.01 speed score, and a 74.93 flexibility score. Uh, at the offensive tackle position, uh, specifically when you look at his numbers, um, he has all the sort of traits that you're looking for uh, when it comes to a potential Pro Bowl uh, offensive tackle. At least the bottom, you know, he hits most of the top end thresholds for that. Uh, his only real issue is that, you know, his speed and his flexibility isn't the greatest. He's more so an explosive athlete. This type of guy really works in ZBS types of schemes uh, and that sort of thing. But I think there's a lot of potential with Effetti. I think if he continues to develop and he continues to do the types of things that he, that he needs to do in terms of development, that there's lots of potential that he could become even better. So uh, we'll see what happens with him. Uh, but I do think that there is a lot of positives with his overall profile uh, that should point to uh, success in the future based on his athleticism overall, if he continues to develop, of course. Then, of course, we have a rookie addition they added uh, in Jordan Ruse. Uh, he's a guard from Purdue. Uh, he has a 59 explosive lower body strength score, a 56.73 speed score, and a 75.73 flexibility score. Um, all those marks are really good decent you know he pretty much hits all the thresholds you're looking for uh, when it comes to a Pro Bowl guard uh, his biggest trait of course is his flexibility for his size it deals with leverage so he is someone who may be better in pass protection than the guys that you already have on the roster and that's the biggest thing is I think where the Seahawks may have been f failing or struggling a bit is in pass protection they definitely have been finding great ZBS types uh, you know, guys that can kind of hit the holes uh, quickly. Uh, but they haven't really been finding very good pass protectors. You know, guys that can really hold up leverage-wise uh, based on their athleticism traits. So I think Ruse, if he actually does get a chance to start or at least be a rotational guy, I think he might actually give you some value long-term uh, based on his flexibility traits. We'll see what happens with him. But I do think that there's lots of positives to his overall athleticism profile. Then, of course, we have Justin Britt. Uh, he is currently your center, but he's played multiple positions. You know, he's played, they tried him out at tackle, they tried him out at guard, they tried him at a bunch of different positions. And based on his athleticism at the center position specifically, 
is a 91.01 explosive lower body strength score, 92.15 speed score, and 92.61 flexibility score. He's by far the example of people going, athleticism doesn't matter. Look at Justin Britt. He's this great athlete and he didn't work out. But again, and I have to say this time and time again, uh, athleticism is a trait amongst many traits uh, at the position. And just because Justin Britt, just because a guy is a tremendous athlete as offensive lineman doesn't necessarily mean that he has the other traits you're looking for when it comes to experience, technique, etc. Uh, grit, toughness, strength. And Britt is very much a moldable piece and they've been trying to do him that way. But keep in mind, just like he has all the athleticism traits of an all pro center based on the data. However, he hasn't played the position that much, you know, like it's a new position for him. So I, I think that people just have to kind of slow the roll a bit with a guy like him because, uh, you know, learning on the job is always hard, especially the NFL level. And uh, I, I would just not consider because of his lack of experience at the center position, I would just not really consider him to be a guy who will ever become an all pro player. But at the very least starter uh, is something that you should expect uh, based on his past experience based on his athleticism traits and all those other sort of factors but keep in mind that again just because a guy is a super duper athlete doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to equal tremendous success at the NFL level when you have other traits that go into the offensive line position than just athleticism let me get to another uh, rookie of them Justin Senior uh, he's an offensive tackle out of Mississippi State and this is where the, the Seahawks are, they went the super duper athletic route and now they seem to be going the not athletic route. I, you know, uh, Justin Senior based on his athleticism has a 26.14 explosive lower body strength score, a 23.17 speed score, and a 21.01 flexibility score. Uh, all those marks don't really hit all pro thresholds nor do they hit pro bowl thresholds when it comes to tackle position. And not only that, uh, he's barely starter level. Uh, you know, and again, this is bottom threshold for starters. So. Uh, you know, I'll be I'm going to be adding another layer to this in terms of averages for positions and stuff like that But because uh, again, these are bottom thresholds, but I just think when you look at Justin senior you have to go Oh, you know, like eh, that's not good uh, In terms of his athleticism a lot of times these types of tackles that are this unathletic just don't work out like The bottom end threshold for starters. That's like a handful of players that hit that threshold. So uh, I would worry about Justin Senior becoming a long-term starter for you guys but they seem to think differently they seem to be trying to experiment with unathletic offensive linemen and see what happens and uh, I mean we'll see but I do think that he's an example that kind of contradicts the notion that all they're trying to do is get these great athletes when you draft a guy like Justin Senior which bleeds into the next player Luke Jokel uh, Luke Jokel based on his athleticism has a 50.76 explosive lower body strength score at 41 point 75 speed score and a 78.70 flexibility score uh, Luke Jokel never was a all-pro or pro ball player uh, coming out of Texas A&M uh, he did not have the speed of a pro ball player and that's really the main uh, sort of issue and again this is bottom and threshold you know this is like every single pro ball player had at least this much speed every single pro ball player had at least this much explosiveness Every single pro player had this much flexibility. And when it comes to Luke Jokel's case, from the get-go, he didn't hit a major threshold that you need to hit for bottom end threshold when it comes to speed for his size. And though he does have great flexibility, and though he does have at least average explosiveness, realistically his issue just continues to be that he's just not super explosive. He's not really fast enough to really contend with uh, players on the edge. And that's been his I mean, that has been his issue continually is he just doesn't have enough explosiveness or speed to deal with edge athletes on the edge. You know, when he goes up against athletes that are above average explosive or above average fast, he can't deal with that that well. So despite the fact that he does have really good flexibility, uh, at least above average flexibility, significantly above average flexibility, it doesn't matter if you have above average flexibility to maintain leverage if you can't get your hands onto the player, if you can't put yourself in position uh, to actually cut a player off because you don't have enough explosiveness or speed to get yourself into that position. Uh, so Luke Jokel is a guy that they're definitely going to try to see what they can do with him.
but based on his data you're basically looking at just a starter and if you're lucky you might put him inside but he's never been the grittiest player either so it's, I just don't know what they're going to do with Luke Jokel but what I do know is is that I would not expect a all pro pro bowl comeback with him as much as someone who might might develop into a starter and that's about it and that may be what they're looking for is just to find a starter but that's the, the main sort of thing with Luke Jokel is that he just doesn't uh, have uh, all the athleticism traits to be a elite tackle. Then we have some somewhat of a positive. You know, they got Mark Lewinsky in the previous draft. Uh, he has an 86.61 explosive lower body strength score, a 67.97 speed score, and 87.35 flexibility score. Uh, all those marks hit what you're looking for for uh, a Pro Bowl guard. Uh, and though he lacks the speed of an all-pro player, he's really, really close. He's the perfect example of a ZBS type of guard uh, where he has, you know, great explosiveness, great flexibility and though he isn't the fastest guy he at least has above average speed and uh, I, th I think he was a pretty decent uh, selection for them in the in the previous drafts and uh, I think that when you look at his profile there's lots of positives with him so if I was to say one of the biggest strengths about the Seattle Seahawks offensive line uh, it would be Glowinski because he's a guy who one has experience of course at the guard position at West Virginia coming in uh, to the draft but he's also a guy who has lots of positive in terms of explosiveness and flexibility when it comes to zbs type schemes uh, so i would be excited about him moving forward based on his athleticism traits and is one example why they are trying to get athletes at the at the uh, offensive line positions uh, and one example is glowinski then we go into another free agency pickup uh, they they brought in ode uh, abushi uh, i probably said that wrong sorry uh, but with his athleticism, he has 11.20 explosive lower body strength score, a 15.05 speed score, and a 25.94 flexibility score. Uh, this just doesn't cut it, guys. Um, you know, he does not have all pro explosiveness. He does not have pro bowl explosiveness. He doesn't hit uh, the speed or flexibility. And in many ways, he would be a fringe starter candidate uh, at, at the offensive tackle position. So um, he's another example where, with Justin Senior that. I don't know what exactly they're looking at or what they're trying to do, but um, they're trying to target these like unathletic guys and see what happens. And uh, you know, I don't know about this. Uh, I think even the GM and I, I can't remember the article uh, that that uh, or at least the reporter, but he was quoted as saying that our metrics department really liked Ode, and I don't know what metrics you're looking at. It, it you know, like he's a very very unathletic player and I don't really think there's a lot of upside with him in the future and the last player to highlight is Reese Odhiambo and again I probably said that wrong uh, but of course he was a draft pick from previous year uh, from Boise State uh, I believe I think so uh, and based on his athleticism he has a 33.19 explosive or body strength score a 45.75 speed score and a 45.78 uh, flexibility score as you can kind of see he pretty much is close to the Pro Bowl threshold when it comes to his speed and flexibility but his explosiveness just doesn't really cut it at the guard position uh, when it comes to all pro or Pro Bowl thresholds best case scenario he becomes a starter but you're talking about a guy who's a below average uh, you know athlete at the guard position so um, I just don't think that that's the best thing you know looking for a guy like that so um, you know we'll well, again, there, there are lots of things to look at him with, but I think that you might be better off going with a guy like Jordan Ruse, uh, you know, from uh, Purdue, or uh, Mark Lewinsky, of course. It might be better to, to go with those guys than with Rees, uh, who just kind of just has a starter profile, and that's it, and he isn't really that athletic of a guy. So in conclusion, when you look at the Seattle Seahawks offensive line, at least the players that they've been trying to get... Uh, the players they've drafted, there was a point when they were just going after the most athletic offensive linemen, uh, you know, with George Faint and, uh, well, Font, uh, and of course, uh, Justin Britt, and even Jermaine Effetti is a guy who has, you know, elite explosiveness, like, and Mark Lewinsky. So they've been going after these types of guys, but 
this year is one of those years where they went after Justin Britt and they got Ode Abuji and you know her both those guys are some of the least athletic offensive linemen at least at the offensive tackle position in the NFL right now uh, and of course they got Rees in the previous draft too who was just kind of a, a below average athlete overall uh, and I and even Ethan Posick who is above average fast but he's not exactly elite in explosiveness speed or flexibility uh, and of course they get Luke Jokel who does have good flexibility traits but doesn't have very good speed traits overall to be a high quality player uh, which kind of causes which kind of explains some of his issues as a as an NFL player so they've been they targeted offensive linemen that were super athletic and for some reason whether they just don't trust the method anymore. They've been trying to say athleticism doesn't matter, so let's go get on athletic guys and see what happens. But I just don't think that that's the right approach. So I still think the Seattle Seahawks are going to struggle a lot. Uh, you know, the the and they're going to struggle not necessarily because they have unathletic players, but just because they have athletic players that are raw. You know, they they draft players that are athletic. Uh, but not necessarily the most refined as football players. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many times I have to say this. You know, when I covered the Dallas Cowboys or I covered the Cleveland Browns or all those places, they drafted players, they got players, they acquired players who were super athletic, but they also were great football players, great technicians, uh, and, you know, were very refined players, very polished players coming out of college. Uh, and that just doesn't seem to be what the Seahawks were doing. And, they still keep doing this so I don't I don't know I really can't tell you what the future for the Seattle Seahawks line is gonna do I just know that when it comes to the whole idea that all they do is target great offensive you know athletes that isn't the case they've been going after some of the least athletic offensive linemen recently and I don't know what's driving this if it's just scouts or coaches that are trying to you know say hey the, ath the athletes failed let me do my thing uh, or just desperation because the athletes that they drafted didn't quite develop in the types of players that they thought they were going to develop into. Uh, or that the fact that scouting is just a lot more complex than just looking at athleticism. But I, all I can really say is is that the Seahawks are a team that I don't think their offensive line will be terrible this year by any stretch of the imagination. But what I do think is is that they're not exactly following the sort of cliche that all they do is, is get great a offensive line athletes and I don't think it's the the right approach uh, I think you you might be learning the wrong lessons is all I'm trying to say potentially is all I'm trying to say with them so uh, you know the Seahawks have definitely been a team that's that's had a lot of luck that's 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 shown that they can draft certain players to fit their identity but offensive line just seems to be one of those types of positions where uh, they just have been struggle busting it you know especially at the tackle position so um so again uh, my name is james coburn you can find my work at draftcoburn at wordpress.com you can also follow me on twitter at geometrics and if you like this content and you want more content like this be sure to leave a like and subscribe share this video as well uh, with anybody that you know and i will talk to you guys in the next video peace